Hi. Monster PG Keen. It's been a while. Cheers. Clink. It's spilling all over my hand. <laughs> Today, we're doing duct tape crafts. <laughs> I've been wanting to do this video for a while and I've had the duct tape just sitting around. It was just a matter of like, that creative like burst kind of has to hit you <laughs> to do like a craft that takes a little bit. So yeah, I have three rolls of duct tape. I have uh, the mustache duct tape. They no longer make this. I found it on eBay like a long time ago and yeah, pretty cool. And then I got the zebra one. I don't know if they still make this one. I think they might, it just might be a little bit harder to find. Um, don't let Amazon like kind of rip you off. <laughs> I know Amazon likes to sell like patterned duct tape for like 10 bucks or something, but I believe this was like closer to five or six, so. Yeah, just putting that out there. And then the black duct tape, you could still find pretty easily. I did have a white roll of duct tape, but I use it for my screen printing to like kind of clean up the frame a bit. So I ran out of my white one. I actually really like white duct tape. It's really beautiful. Yeah, I also have some scissors. These are titanium nonsticks. So we'll see how they fare on the duct tape. I was a ripper back in the day. I would just like, um, rip the duct tape, but it does look neater to cut it with scissors. I have a pen. I really like these pens. My swag guy actually got me on these pens. She ordered me a pack of them like a while ago and I, I used them all up till they were bone dry. And yeah, so I have another pack and I'm going to make a duct tape flower pen. Do you guys remember these? I made so much of these back in the day. Oh look, I brought my um, 3D glasses. We saw Kung, Kung Fu Panda like five, I don't know, a month or two ago. I remember them being a lot bigger, but maybe just where our faces were so small that they looked really big. I was kind of tempted to put like the, the duct tape in the middle. I have like my Domo shirt, like maybe I should have worn that, but it's really hot outside. So I kind of needed something with a little bit more like kind of airflow, I guess. So now it's just deciding if I want to do zebra print or mustache print decisions. I kind of want to do mustache print just because it's so funny to me. I'm so excited for this. <laughs> uh, another reason why I kind of held off doing this video is because I had nothing to say, but I have a, a couple things I, I feel like I can talk about now. So when I was researching uh, for this video, like things that I could make, just so I could, you know, jog my memory up a bit. I came across this video where this girl was making duct tape cuffs, like cuff bracelets. And they were fire. Like she was adding studs and everything. I mean, maybe we could do that. Um, that's originally why I got the zebra print duct tape is because I was like, I want to make a zebra print bracelet and I was going to stud this, but I ended up doing fabric later. But I just thought it was really cool that she did studs on a duct tape cuff bracelet and like behind her there's a wall of duct tape like a mountain of it and it's all different patterns and such her outfit her hair like everything was just so of its time this is so exciting i don't think i made this very even I definitely also made a lot of wallets back in the day. I remember, so we had like purple and blue duct tape and I wanted to make the biggest flower pen possible. And I think my grandma still had it for so long. And uh, yeah, it was, it was like this giant, so funny. This keeps clinking, should I take it off? Oh, speaking of, of its time and such. Does anybody remember the Windows Movie Maker lyric videos? I remember the blue ones, but I also remember like the step after, which was like different colored backgrounds, but still like vaguely similar, just, you know, Windows Movie Maker transitions and stuff like that. Um, I made several back in the day. I don't even remember what channel I would have done it on or what songs I did, but I definitely remember I tried doing it and it took four ever you had to make the little slide with the lyrics and you had to like line it up perfectly 
oh if you've never done this before i covered the like base in like a pattern and then the, the middle of the flower i did black and i made it so where the cap could go back on and then to make the little petals if i can remember correctly um you're gonna kind of here let me show you this is so fun oh my gosh this feels right like in my brain so first you want to fold one corner in and kind of leave like that amount of sticky left and then you're going to fold this corner in i don't want to watch tutorial i just want to go off my brain because i think that's more fun and then we start oh my gosh this is so funny i'm going to send a picture to my husband after Honestly, I don't even know if you're going to be able to tell that it's mustache print, but like, I'll know, you know? Okay, so we're trying this again to see the ratio I like. Okay. So I... I think I like that ratio more. I just kind of lined up the bottom to this bottom instead of dragging this corner all the way over. I don't know if that makes any sense or if anybody actually cares or is ever going to do this ever again. I might be the only weirdo still making duct tape. Flower pens in 2024. Maybe I shouldn't even mention the year, so this can be like a time warp. <laughs> I can hear my monster fizzing. So I just kind of go like back and forth, do like opposites. So you'll do the four like across, and then you can start playing around with like filling up the gaps around when I was a kid, um, my first experience with YouTube, I don't remember how old I was. I didn't have uh, my own like computer yet. Eventually I did get like a dinosaur computer, but before that I would use my mom's laptop. And my brother was actually the one that would go on YouTube first. He would put on Ben 10 action figure, like stop motion videos. So people would basically play with their action figures and create stories on stop motion or they would just hold them up and be like i'm going hero heat blast did you guys ever watch ben 10 <laughs> i feel a lot of like you'll see like a lot of videos where people talk about their older brother and how like older brother culture kind of like influenced them but i was the oldest so i have a younger brother so he's the one that like introduced me to youtube and star wars and minecraft and call of duty and xbox so yeah he liked to put on the song, I am a gummy bear, if you remember that one. And he would play like the 10 hour version. I don't know if to annoy me or just because he genuinely enjoyed it, but. Yup. So that's kind of what I'm saying. You kind of go like back and forth. I'm gonna use this to pack my orders. This is like my pack my order pen. I have it here like with all my packing stuff. And then when it like runs out, I can just switch the um, the ink cartridge inside. Uh, as like a symptom of this whole like little brother kind of growing up with me, he was like a year or two younger than me. I would play a lot of what we called Barbies and superheroes. So it was essentially like playing Barbies or playing action figures, but together. So I would play with my Barbies and he would play with his action figures, mostly Ben 10, uh, some like Transformers and the, tra you know, like the Transformers were like the jocks and the Ben 10 ones were like, you know, the little guys, just because they were like little figures and stuff like that. He had like a Optimus Prime and a Bumblebee that like actually transformed to, you know, it's like standing form, so those are pretty cool. I wonder what happened to those two. Do you ever think about that, like your childhood toys and you're like, I wonder what happened to it. So this morning, Converse announced the date of the knee high Converse drop. I knew it was soon, like I just had this gut feeling and I woke up from a nap to seeing that post and literally for an hour I was like freaking out like oh my gosh I'm kind of chill now I've mellowed out but I, I was definitely freaking out for for quite a bit and I said I was working on a knee-high converse outfits video and now I'm like okay I really gotta do it because my last one sucked and there's a real lack of knee-high converse fashion videos on YouTube so I don't know how big I want to make this but it's coming out really cute. I like this a lot. <laughs> I've developed this fear as a YouTube 
personality. I only exist in the confines of your screen. I've developed this fear of my favorite videos being deleted. And it's a very valid fear, I think, just because I do like get attached to my comfort videos and I am a rewatcher. I am. I definitely go back and rewatch my favorite videos. Yeah, because it, it's just been happening a lot more recently and it's hard because it's like if it wasn't viral to where people saved it or re-uploaded it, like you may never see that video again. And it's just something I've been thinking about lately. Like, do I just accept that the videos are gone forever and I'll never see them and I just find new comfort videos? Do I download the videos and keep them on a hard drive like a crazy person? Uh, specifically when a YouTuber like kind of just stops uploading, I kind of get afraid that as they're distancing themselves from YouTube, that they are also kind of uh, growing to like hate their videos or something along those lines and that they'll come back and be like, I forgot about these. I'm just gonna private them because it's cringy or whatever. And to me, it's not cringy. <laughs> I know I've talked about this several times on my channel, but but it keeps happening. So I think this will always kind of be in the back of my head. I'm somebody that goes to sleep with YouTube videos on as well. So like I will put on like Drew Monson or number two video, which is like his second channel where he literally talks for 40 minutes about whatever he wants. And I live for it and I rewatch them all the time. I've seen every single one of those videos like dozens of times and that sounds crazy, but I can't fall asleep in the quiet and, and um, having somebody talk kind of like quiets my own brain, if that makes sense. And I've always liked being read to, so it's kind of a version of that where they're not reading, but they're talking. So it's just like very calming for me. And, and uh, sometimes I'll put on like Trisha's podcast or like the dropouts, but I feel like with those podcasts, if I've never seen the episode before, I'm more likely to stay awake because I'm actively listening. But if I've seen the video before, then I can fall asleep better. And so I will put on Drew Monson's videos or Acid Milk. I'll put on like the longest Acid Milk videos and I'll go to sleep to them talking. And I do worry with like somebody like Acid Milk that hasn't uploaded in a couple years that one day they'll go back on their channel and be like, you know, this makes me anxious and, and then take all the videos down, which they can do like very valid but I'm afraid of that day. And I hope they don't, like with Drew, I know he won't do that because this is his job. And if he takes down videos, he's lessening his chance for money, if that makes sense. And those videos are being rewatched because other people like me like hearing him talk. So, so at least I know with him, none of the videos would be taken down, but I think I'm almost done. I don't want it too big. How cute, oh my goodness. <laughs> Oh, I wrote down noodles updates. I'm sorry if you don't care about noodles, but I, I figured if you're watching this, then maybe maybe you care. <laughs> Cause I feel like nobody's gonna watch this. I feel only my like YouTube friends are gonna watch this. So uh, thank you if you're here listening to me talk about nothing. But um, I assume maybe you care about my personal life. <laughs> maybe, uh, probably not my dog, but maybe my personal life. Uh, so noodles had a second surgery. They told me when he got the first surgery that there was a chance that he might need the pin removed from his elbow once the like bones are starting to fuse together well and stuff and that was the case like he still was not very comfortable moving and walking with it so they told me okay at the end of the month um you have to come in for another surgery so that he can he can get it removed and they like are pretty good about giving a quote so this one they said it was gonna be like 400 500 dollars i was like okay but I, I have a couple weeks to you know come up with that money or whatever so it wasn't like as dire as the first one and so i took him in for that other surgery and now he is like putting weight on it slowly but surely and he's so much happier too which is really nice they said he might never have a full extension again just because that first surgery like ideally you you want the surgery done within a day or two and i i maybe had to wait like a week because of money so um imagine though like having a couple thousand dollars to be like okay now i kind of have like a a goal for my savings account when I, as I'm rebuilding it, but I just thought that was, yeah. So he's doing a lot better, I think. Uh, 
and I, I think he should be getting his cone off soon so I can, you know, maybe take him swimming or something that's supposed to promote him using his, this is coming out so cool, look at that. Wow, promote him using his uh, bad, I don't know if I want to do the last layer of black or in mustache. Oh my gosh, he can sit in the, stop. Oh, no, girl, come back. Oh gosh. Yay, I think that's a good size. Cute. It kind of looks like newspaper. I feel like for the thumbnail, I should do the, let's see. I was going to do a duct tape cuff, but now I don't, I don't have anything else to talk about. <laughs> I wish you guys were here. Maybe I should ask for questions, but maybe not. Maybe that sounds dumb. Okay, so I have something really random, but I wrote this poem. So the story behind this is one, I hate poetry. I do, like I can't stand reading it because it just comes across so dramatic. Like I don't, I don't think too hard about things and I feel like poetry, it just, it's overthinking to the max. Anyways, okay. That being said, I went to a like little school poetry night for my little brother and all the kids like wrote poems or read poems or read short stories or whatever and i thought it was so cute like how simple their poems were like it's just so innocent and pure and a lot of them wrote about their favorite color and they did it exactly like this what i'm about to read to you is exactly the format they did but they just described like why it's their favorite color so i thought i would do it too and i thought it was really cute and i read it to my little brother and he did not care <laughs> But that's little boys for you. And I thought it was a fun little like creative exercise, I guess. So maybe poetry isn't all that bad. It's just sometimes I think it, it's too much. Um, so this is about my favorite color, gray. My current favorite color. I feel like it changes every so often, but right now it's gray. Don't laugh at me, okay? I'm looking at you, don't laugh at me. So gray is the color of the skate park and the cement I skate on. Gray is the color of the cobblestone I mine through to find diamonds in Minecraft. Gray is the color of the swirls on my PewDiePie gaming chair. Gray is the color of my Spudros house. Gray is the color of my car. Gray is the bridge between white and black. Gray makes me feel calm. Gray is my current favorite color. But yeah, I thought I would share that just because I am somebody that likes the simple things and something important to me is like knowing all my friends like favorite colors and like favorite artists or like what makes you happy you know things like that like i like learning the little things about people me waving around my new duct tape flower pen okay that's all thanks for watching bro fist